President, please be seated. The court is now back in session, and the floor is given to the co-prosecutors to resume the questioning. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, we were talking about the day that you were uh, taken to, uh, arrested and taken to K-17. You talked about being uh, driven in a vehicle there. Um, were there other people who had been arrested in the same vehicle with you? Uh, and, and if so, who, who, uh, who was in that vehicle with you? Among them. Answer. After that time, people had been sent into that location. My wife, together with my children, as well as my uh, younger siblings and others, had been transported to that location. Many of uh, them. 60, 70, or 80 of them. I cannot recall all of them since it happened a long time ago. Uh, I understand. Um, I'm asking about the, the vehicle in which you were, you were brought to K-17. Um, you've identified another person from the hospital uh, who was arrested, um, uh, your chief or superior at the hospital, Bu Lai. Um, was she in the same vehicle as you, or was she uh, taken to K-17 K uh, by a different uh, vehicle or means? And so they were transported in the same vehicle on the same day as I was uh, all, also on that vehicle. We were in the same vehicle. And uh, how long was Bu Lai uh, detained, or I'm sorry, Bu, Bu Lai? How long was Bu Lai detained uh, with you at K-17? Uh, and what happened to her? Answer, I met Bulai in the detention facility at the time. Bulai was detained there for half a month, and then this individual was transported out so while I was still being detained within that uh, center. I, do, I did not know where uh, Bulai was sent to afterwards. Did you ever see her again uh, after that day that she was taken out from K-17? Answer, no, I have never seen her since then. Now, uh, between the time of the deaths of Tahom and Kampun and the time you were arrested, um, did you see a document or a circular uh, about the subject of arrests? Uh, and if so, can you describe for the, for the court the document you saw uh, during that time period? Answer. No documents at the time. I heard from others about that. In, in your OCIJ interview, 
you refer to a circular uh, that you received, um, which you read to some of the hospital economics unit. Can you describe uh, that document to us? Um, how did you receive it? When did you receive it? And what did the document say? Uh, answer on this particular issue. After the incident of Tahom and Kampun, there were others going to our location to make an announcement, particularly Juan, alias Pam Kun, used a small loudspeaker going into the detention center. He, that at the time, made an announcement that please do not uh, feel afraid or terrified. We, in fact, uh, detained all of you, but uh, we encourage all of you not to feel terrified or scared. And at the time, the announcement was also about the treason committed by Kampun, and he also stated that he was uh, there in the name of uh, the sector. He made such an announcement about the treason of Kampun, but he did not show us any relevant documents. A few days later on, my child wanted to go to relief and uh, my child uh, called Uncle Juan. I wanted to go to restroom. And the security guard said, How? Why you call out the name of Juan? Since Juan uh, was also the one betrayed the regime. Okay, you, you're describing uh, something uh, from your DC CAM interview um, of uh, an announcement that, that Chun made uh, on the day you arrived at K-17. I, I want to focus on the, the period just before you were arrested. And I'm going to read to you an excerpt from your OCIJ interview, E3-7695, Khmer ERN 00236716, English 00239487, French 00274817. Uh, this was your testimony to OCIJ. Question, uh, did you notice who gave the order for your arrest? Answer, shortly before my arrest, I received a circular from the upper echelon, probably from the sector secretary. I don't remember who signed it. I read that circular to the personnel of the hospital economics unit. That circular talked about the three categories of the enemy. The enemy in the first category had to be smashed. The one in the second category had to be detained. The one in the third category had to be sent to the cooperative." Uh, end of quote. Uh, do you remember uh, this uh, document, uh, Mr. Witness? Uh, and can you tell us uh, how it was that you received this circular or document? An answer. 
that was the case before my arrest. I was given a letter, a document rather, commun uh, telling the female and male combatants in Office 80. I do not recall the all the content, and then that document it discussed the three types of enemies. The first type was to be smashed, the second was to be detained, and the third group was to be sent to cooperatives. That was the first point. And I was also, I also received a letter of invitation to a meeting. The meeting did, uh, was not held, did not usually hold at uh, K17. And at the time, as I received a letter of, in, of invitation to attend a meeting at K17, I felt a little bit uh, shocked at the time, and the vehicle came to take me, and it was that time that I was arrested. In fact, at first, I did not know about the principle or the plan of uh, them, but later on, after I received the document and also the letter, I started to realize that there was there were uh, plans uh, as such. The first category of uh, enemies um, in this document, the people who were to be smashed, uh, were these people uh, identified by name, or w what did the document say uh, about who were going to be considered in this first category of? enemies who were going to be smashed. What, what, what did the document say about that, if you remember? Answer. It's, the document said there were three types of uh, enemies and the document did not discuss who were to be considered within the first group, second group, or third group. Uh, on the subject of uh, documents on uh, categories of people to be arrested, uh, I want to read to you, um, Mr. Witness, an excerpt from the uh, OCIJ interview of Sao Sarun, um, who you know replaced Taham as sector secretary. Uh, this is document E3 slash 367, E3 slash 367, Khmer 0025144 through 41, English 00278697, French 0048600. 013. Uh, Sarun here testifies about a meeting at which the uh, Secretary of Division 920 uh, had received a list of the people to be arrested. And this is what he said, I quote, Tassan from Division 920 came to the meeting with Ta Supia and me. He personally spoke about that arrest for example, the arrest of Net Ta. Tassan already held the list, and I could not refuse." End of quote. First question, Mr. Witness. Um, who was Tassan? Did, did you know uh, this person identified by Sarun as Tassan? I am not sure about Tassan. It was said that Tassan was the commander of the division, but I uh, 
did not see him. I used to work with Ata Sarun. He was, he used to be the sector committee as well. Concerning disclosing the document or documents, it was the policy of uh, the upper echelon to arrest uh, the three categories of enemies. The document or documents that were given to me uh, on one occasion. After the arrests, uh, soldiers from the division were sent to protect, to give protection to the detainees. Do I understand correctly that it was uh, division soldiers who were assigned to, to guard you at while you were detained at K-17? Do I understand correctly? Ma. Answer, that is correct. Soldiers from the division, as I said. The soldiers from the sector, then, the soldiers from the division were assigned to guard all of us uh, during the time that we had to go to relieve ourselves uh, day and night. So they came to guard us day and night. So those people were from the division. And, and were those soldiers armed? Answer, yes, they were armed while we were being walked to bathe or to relieve. They had weapons with them. Eight, nine, or ten of them so were there to guard the prisoners, said the witness. And can you describe for us the, the building in which you were detained at K-17? <coughs> Answer. The building was on the ground floor and the, it had the concrete or tile floor. And the wall was the walls were made from a wooden plank. It was two-story building, and the walls upstairs were also uh, made from a wood planks, and the roof were made from corrugated iron. There, and as I said, it was a two-story building. Were there prisoners detained on both floors of the building? Uh, and if so, uh, what floor were you detained on? Answer, I was detained on the ground floor. And some were on the second floor. I heard the sound of uh, urinating and also the sound when those detainees uh, were released perhaps to were released perhaps to relieve themselves and I, I also heard the sound of releasing or unlocking the shackle some of uh, us were detained on the ground floor, and many of uh, uh, the detainees were on the second floor. Rather, correction from the inter interpreter, not many detainees were on the second floor. Now, you've indicated that you, when you were detained on the ground floor, you were tied up. Uh, can you describe uh, how, how it was that you were tied up 
uh, during the period you were detained at K-17. Our hands were tied to behind our back and our ankles were also tied up. And the table was set within the building, in the corner of the, bu of the building, for them to have to sit down and have a meeting. And we were uh, tied up and put in a row. Were, were you tied up like that the, the entire month that you were at K-17? Answer, yes, that is true. I was tied up for the entire month. You, you mentioned that you heard uh, the sa uh, shackles, the sound of shackles being unlocked. Um, was there anyone on the ground floor who, who was shackled, uh, or was it uh, the sound that you heard, was that coming from the, uh, the upper floor? Answer, I heard the sound of the shackle. Uh, the, detain the detainees uh, were on the ground floor, were uh, tied up uh, to the hammock string. They were not shackled. The, uh, you've described hearing the sounds of the shackles being unlocked coming from upstairs. Did you ever see the shackles uh, that were used uh, on the upper floor at K-17? Yes. That those shackles were made out of wood and uh, it had the bar, the wooden bar, to be inserted into the rings. The detainee uh, was uh, were shackled to one of uh, their ankles. The shackles, as I said, uh, were made out of uh, wood. When was it that you saw these shackles? Was it during the month that you were at K-17, or was it later on that you saw these shackles? It was uh, before that time, or one month before that time. I'm not sure I understood. Was, are, are you saying you saw the shackles before uh, you were detained at K-17 or during the, the month you were at K-17? Answer, I had seen those shackles before, said the witness. Mm. I had seen those shackles uh, one month before my detention. And can, can you tell us wh what was the occasion? How is it that you came to see these shackles one month before your detention? Home took me upstairs because at that time uh, people from uh, actually Tassan, the uh, chief of the uh, division, was detained there along with other people from the division.
just to clarify, you're saying that um, pre previous to your detention, uh, Taham had taken you uh, to the upper floor at K-17 once, and there were uh, prisoners from Division 920 who were detained there. Did I understand correctly? Yes. Because at that time, the event did not uh, happen yet, and the home was still there. And when he took me upstairs, I saw those uh, shackles. Now, you've indicated that during the month you were at a K-17, uh, there were the guards there were division uh, soldiers. Um, was there a person who was in charge uh, of the detention of the prisoners? Was there one person who, who, was, who had overall responsibility? Uh, and if so, who was that? I did not know because at that time I was uh, being detained and I did not know who was in charge of that K-17 office because I was not allowed to walk outside. Did you ever see Tassaroon there uh, during the month you were detained at K-17? No, I did not. What about Ta Sopia, the uh, sector military chief? Did you see him at K-17? No. Only later when I was assigned to work at the work site, I saw Ta Sopi who came to the work site uh, one time. And I was sent there after I was released from detention. You talked about there being uh, a small number of prisoners who were held on the upper floor. Uh, did you know uh, who, during the month you were at K-17, who were the uh, who were the prisoners who were held on the upper floor? From what people said, there were uh, Santon, Tha, Ra, Wun, and Kem Chan. Who was Kem Chan? Kem Chan uh, had his uh, native name as Puk. Uh, what was his uh, position in uh, the sector? Kem Chan was uh, a district a committee, and and Ra uh, was also part of the district a committee, and uh, Ra was the deputy. As for Tha, Tha and Sun Thon uh, were at the economic uh, unit or commerce. Now, you've previously talked about San Tan uh, as your uh, boss at the economics office. Uh, was he uh, at, detained at K-17 the entire time, uh, the entire month you were there, uh, or was he taken away at some point? He was detained on the upper floor 
um, his office was uh, the uh, commerce office. And in fact, he was uh, overall in charge of the uh, Ministry of uh, Economics there. I, well, I was detained on the uh, ground floor. Ta and Sun Thon were detained on the upper floor. Ra was the deputy secret secretary of uh, Kohnye district. And in fact, there were four members who were part of the district committee. Were these prisoners on the upper floor, were they there the entire month um, that you were at K-17, or, or were they taken away at some point? From what I heard, uh, they were taken out and transported by a vehicle. Yeah. But I cannot recall whether they had been taken away before I was released or whether it happened after my release. Did you ever see any of those people again? Did you ever see Santan, Ta, Ra? Uh, any of those people who were detained on, on the upper floor? Did you ever see them again? No, I did not, and they disappeared since. After you arrived at K-17, uh, Mr. Witness, w were you interrogated? No, I did not hear anything about the uh, torture. As for the interrogation, I could not say because they were detained on the upper floor while I was detained on the ground floor. I know you've indicated that your, your recollection of this uh, isn't great. Let me read to you uh, a short excerpt from your DC CAM interview E37696, a Khmer ERN 00231542, English 00384164, a French 00384268. Uh, this is uh, what you said in your DC CAM interview. Question. Once you were detained there, did you see prisoners were taken to be interrogated? Answer, yes, they all were interrogated, even I was, uh, end of quote. Um, uh, I understand you're saying that there, you were not tortured, um, but were you questioned? And can you tell us about wh um, uh, what questions you were asked, who you were questioned by, if you remember? I was uh, questioned once. We all were questioned. I was taken out of the detention uh, room and questioned. And I was asked who actually inducted me into the uh, party. And I said it was Da Kampoon. And then I was asked whether I was sure. I said yes. And they did not ask me any more questions after that. You, you said you were taken out of the detention room. Where, where was it that you were taken to be interrogated, to be questioned? I 
was taken uh, out of the detention house. And then I was uh, questioned. They did not take me far from the detention house. And who, who was it that, that questioned you? Who was it that took you out uh, of the detention house and uh, questioned you? I did not know them, but they were people from the division. And I cannot recall recall uh, it well. The chief was Tu. That's all I can recall. Okay, you've, you've talked about uh, earlier about um, um, Bu, Bu Lai, uh, the a woman who was your chief at the sector hospital being uh, taken out of a K-17, um, possibly others who were on the first floor. Um, did you ever hear uh, where, where these people were taken? Uh, did you ever hear any, anything about uh, executions of people who had been detained uh, and where it was that people were taken to be executed? I do not know about that. However, what I could say is that uh, some detainees were taken uh, and placed on a vehicle and drove away, and I did not know what happened to them later. I want to read another short excerpt from your DC CAM interview, E37696. Uh, Khmer 00231531. Uh, English 00384152, uh, French 00384258. Uh, you said, uh, quote, some killings happened, but not at the prison. They did along the way to Crutchy. And uh, earlier in the interview, you talked about hearing that people on the upper floor had been transported to the west. Uh, who is it that you heard, who is it that told you uh, that prisoners uh, who were taken away were sent uh, to the west uh, uh, to the, in the direction of Crutchy? Uh, who is it that you heard that from? heard it uh, from other people, but I personally did not uh, see that. People whispered from one to another about this. All right. Um, you've indicated that uh, the day uh, that you arrived at K-17, um, Pan Kon, alias Chun, came to K-17 and made an announcement, and that uh, you described how a few days later your son and you asked about him and received a response from the guards that indicated that he had now been uh, considered as, uh, as one of the traitors. Um, do you know what happened to Chun uh, after uh, you were arrested and detained at K-17? Chun was not detained at the K-17 office. Maybe Chun was arrested uh, in Krati. Uh, 
he was not uh, arrested and detained at K-17 office at all. However, as I uh, said earlier, he uh, came into that uh, building where I was detained and made an announcement regarding uh, the traitors and that we uh, should not worry about that and for that reason in order to put things in orderly uh, manner we had to be uh, detained temporarily and maybe later on he was arrested somewhere near Krati but I was not sure about that um, Mr. President with your leave I'd like to at this time to provide uh, a document to the witness, document E3-1645, E3-1645. Uh, it is an S-21 prisoner list uh, of uh, which identifies over 140 cadres from Mundalkiri, Sector 105 and Division 920, uh, who entered S-21 on the 23rd of November 1977. Uh, there are a number of uh, people on the list that I would like to ask the witness uh, about. So with your leave, uh, may I provide this document to the witness? Yes, you may. Mr. Witness, uh, it's, a, it's a long document, so I'll refer you to uh, uh, a couple of uh, spots here. Um, uh, the second column of the document has uh, uh, the numbers, and if you could turn to uh, number 128 on the list, if you look for number 128, um, uh, the uh, number 128 on this list of prisoners who entered S-21 on the 23rd of November 1977 uh, is Pan uh, Kon alias Chun, uh, identified as a commerce member of Sector 105. Um, you, you've testified, uh, Mr. Witness, that you joined the revelation, revolution with Chun uh, back in 1967 or 68. Um, based on your knowledge of him, was Chun someone who was loyal to the revolution? Uh, Mr. Witness? President, uh, Officer, please uh, assist the witness and uh, try to locate uh, number 128. If he cannot uh, locate that one, he cannot uh, respond to the question. So, uh, Mr. Witness, if you're looking at 128, the S-21 prisoner identified there is Pan Kun, alias Chun, identified as a 35-year-old male uh, who was uh, a member of the, of the commerce in Sector 105. Is, is this the same Chun that we've been talking about? Yes. 
the name Chuan is uh, on this list too. And that is correct because uh, this Chuan also came from sector 105. And you've testified that you joined the revolution uh, with Chuan. Um, to your knowledge, uh, was he a person um, who was loyal to the revolution? Uh, do you have any information about uh, about Chun and whether there was any reason for him to be sent to S21? So I think President uh, Witness, please hold on, and Council with the Copper, do you have the floor? Um, I object to the formulation of this question. I'm not quite sure what it means. Uh, loyal to the revolution. Um, he might have been loyal to the revolution, uh, but still at one point in time committed treason. Um, so uh, the question being loyal to revolution uh, is a very vague, unclear question. And the answer that um, the witness might possibly give will not be very helpful. Mr. President, let me, uh, as I'm, uh, I want to end, and leave some moments for the civil parties. Uh, let me refer the, the witness to a statement he made uh, in his uh, OCIJ interview. This is E3-7695, uh, Khmer 00236713, English 00239484, a French 00274814. Uh, this is what you told ACE OCIJ. Um, you said, as I know it, he, you were referring here to Pan Khon alias Chun, was not the person who assigned Kam Pai to work as a spy. Or he himself did not work as a spy with Kam Pai because Chun was a real revolutionary, end of quote. What did you mean when you told OCIJ that Chun was a real revolutionary? I was answered by the investigators. Whether Chun was appointed by Kampai to, or rather to, to, to let him to join the uh, revolution. And I said Chun was a, a separate person from Kampai. And, the small and on the question of whether he was uh, loyal to the revolution or not, I uh, cannot attest to that, and I do not know the reasons why he was sent to S21 from Kohnye. My last question for you, uh, Mr. Witness. On the same uh, S21 list, um, you were looking at number 128. Uh, the next person on that, on that list, if you could look at number 129, uh, is uh, identified as C. Thorn alias uh, Bo Lee, 27-year-old uh, female uh, who was the deputy chief of midwife in Sector 105 and the wife of Spy. Um, my question, you, you spoke earlier about one of the other people who was arrested around the same time of, as you from the Sector Hospital, a woman named uh, uh, Bo Lee. Is this the same uh, person uh, who you previously identified as uh, one of the uh, persons who were, who were arrested in November 1977? Uh, Bo Lee 
could have been arrested a day before my arrest. And after she was arrested, I uh, did not see her. She was not detained in the same detention center where I was. And that name was uh, Bully. And here it states about her age as of uh, 27 years old. So this is about uh, probably uh, about uh, Bully or Sitong. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Witness, for your time this morning. Uh, Mr. President, we have no further questions. President Judge Lavenge, do you have the floor? Oui, merci, Monsieur Président. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to have the transcript clarified. There is a discrepancy in the spelling of uh, detainee 58 in both the French and English versions. In the English version, the, no, the name is written as Pampoon, whereas in the French version, it is written as Pan Yun. So it would perhaps be good to cross check with the translation uh, services whether there is need for harmonization of the writing or the way the name of that detainee is written. Yeah, thank you, Judge Laverne. We'll ask CMS to look into that. President, uh, witness, you can keep the, the document with you for now and allow now to hand the floor to the litigal lawyers to put questions to this witness. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to all of you. I will probably need more than the five minutes uh, that uh, are given to me because I can see the clock. Uh, Witness, uh, good morning. I am Marie Giroux. I represent the collective of the civil parties in this uh, trial, and I have a few follow-up questions to put to you. You said this morning that uh, in your province uh, the main language was Khmer, but that people also spoke Lao, Tupung, or and Jarai. So I wanted to know if you yourself, if you uh, can, uh, you spoke Lao, or if you can speak Lao. Ma. Yes, I speak both uh, the Laotian and the Khmer languages. And uh, when I speak to my family members, I speak uh, Lao. Thank you. So, was Lao authorized during the DK period? Did you have the possibility of expressing yourself in that language back then? Do you remember that? Yes, we spoke loud. When we uh, met people who uh, spoke loud, we spoke loud, and if uh, I saw Khmer people, I would speak uh, Khmer to them. There were other uh, minority languages, including Tumpuan, Phnom, etc. And uh, the language was not uh, prohibited. However, as I stated, uh, Khmer was the main language at the time. So, during the Khmer Rouge period, basically speaking, you never heard that it was forbidden to speak Lao or another minority language. Did I understand you correctly? Yes. We were not uh, prohibited from speaking any minority uh, languages. You could speak uh, Phnom, Charai, Trumpun, or any uh, minority languages that you could. 
Je vous remercie. Thank you. You said earlier that your wife and your children were also arrested in 1977. And I wanted to know how many children you had back then and how old your children were when they were arrested in 1977. My wife and children were arrested as well, and there were seven of them all together, my, and my her eldest son was about 17 or 18 years old, and the second one was about 16. So the age was uh, starting from there going downward. At the time, we had uh, seven children, but two passed away, and now we have only five. And do you remember the age of the youngest child who was arrested that day. My youngest child is uh, it's over 30 years old this year. He was born in 1981 or 82. And in 1977, when your wife and your seven children were arrested and detained with you, what was the approximate age of the youngest of your children? Was this child just a baby or an infant or a, or a teenager? Can you give, give us an idea? Answer. At the arrest, during the arrest, uh, five of my children were arrested. And later on, I had two other children. So together, I have seven children. During the time, I had three sons and one daughter, said the witness. And after that incident, or after that time, I had two other children. The youngest age was my son, rather. My son uh, was around uh, two years old at the time. And in 1977, I... Uh, went through an ordeal, so he was two years in nine, uh, around two years in 1997, in 1977, rather. Thank you. Do you remember the conditions uh, uh, under which your children were detained with you. And do you remember, for example, the sanitary conditions and uh, the food that was given to them? Do you have any uh, recollections about the detention conditions of uh, your children? Oh, Answer regarding the conditions of the detention and meal. We had meal within the detention center. We were there in, inside the building. We, uh, can, we could not uh, go anywhere we wanted. So no one, and no one cleaned the detention center. The food condition uh, was not good. 
we had uh, pumpkin. We had pumpkin at the time for the entire month and together with rice. No meat, no fish or meat. We were given a small bowl of meal with merely one piece of uh, meat or two pieces of meat. And we had uh, pumpkins. The food condition was very bad, was worst. And there was only uh, one toilet for all of us. No hygiene, no sanitation, no water for us to bathe. At the beginning, uh, we were allowed and walked to take a bath uh, once a week. It was a small bathroom or bathing place for all of us. We were walked to that uh, bathing place. At the beginning, uh, the string was uh, released, was untied uh, from our ankle. And while we at the bathing place, our hand, one of our hand was released from a string. And after bathing, we wore our clothes, and then we were walk into the inside the building again, where our ankles and hands were tied up. So it was lucky enough for me to survive. As Thanks to my mom, and I could uh, survive the, the regime. So the conditions uh, were the were worst. The same uh, happened to children. We had rice together with uh, pumpkin. Fish was everywhere, meat was everywhere, but we were deprived of such a latitude. We were not given with meat and fish. We did not uh, dare to uh, resist or protest uh, the food conditions. <laughs> So what could we do, President? It is now break time, lunch break. The chamber will take lunch break from now until 1.30 p.m. Court of the, court of the Court officer, please assist the witness during the lunch break and uh, please invite him back into the courtroom at 1.30 p.m. And the chamber will give some more time uh, to lead co lawyers for civil party. Security personnel are instructed to bring the accused, accused some pawn, to the waiting room downstairs and please have him returned into the courtroom before 1.30 p.m. The court is now in recess. <laughs>